Hi, this is What You Looking At, and today we got the review of the D-Boys RK06 WS. Hope you enjoy the video. Okay, y'all are probably wondering why I've been doing reviews outside lately. Well, uh, number one, sun is a whole lot better natural lighting, and number two, I like to soak up as much of the sun while it's here because here in Virginia, you never know when it's going to be cold, you never know when it's going to be hot. It was 50 degrees yesterday on Saturday when I went to go play, and now today it feels like it's almost 70. So, you know, I just like to soak up all the good weather I can, but enough of that. Now we're going to get into the review of this gun. First off, as I said, this is the D-Boys RK06 WS. The WS stands for wood and steel. That pretty much means this whole body is steel and everything else is wood. I'm going to pause the video here and show you exactly what is steel. Okay, here we go. <laughs> this is the steel parts of the gun. As you know, magnets attached to steel, not uh, you know all the certain types of pop metals or aluminum. So here we go. Everything with a magnet up there is steel. <laughs> Sorry for all the random magnets. I just wanted to show them all to at once instead of just pointing out each part. So there you go. That's what steel. Overall, my first impression of holding this gun is uh, it's kind of reoccurring, and then it's even better than before. As you know, I used to have a D-Boys with a skeleton stock with just the, uh, the standard metal body. With this, the body has a much better texture to it. The gun, the weight of it is pretty much the same, but it feels a whole lot more balanced out for some reason. Overall, though, absolutely love the feel. Now I'll start from the front and go to the back of this gun. Okay, starting off the front here, we got the full steel flash header, uh, really nice. Unfortunately, it would take some work to get off, so I'm just going to keep it there. Don't mind the very small orange tip compared to how the VFC or the JG blowbacks come with. So, fine with that, I'll keep it there. Your standard front sight, it is adjustable for elevation. Your outer barrel, as I said, this is some type of aluminum, and it has that rigid feeling. You know, that ribbed feeling, just like most outer barrels. You got your, uh, your cleaning rod your fox rod or your cleaning rod right here whatever you like to call it I'm not too sure if it's removable I haven't tried yet you got your uh, your gas tube and this whole piece assembly right here the top piece is steel but as you saw the bottom pieces and that sense of magnet didn't uh, attach to it going to the the first piece of wood on this gun I've held many guns with the wood hand guards and a gun you're actually gonna see up here pretty soon on another unboxing that's probably the only other wood that I'd say is better than this I've held uh, SEMA's with real wood, I've held JG's with real wood. Um, this is an extremely nice feeling wood. I really don't know how to explain it, but it's just really smooth and it, it gives it a really authentic feel and look to the gun itself. Moving up a little bit more forward here, this is kind of uh, disappointing. The bolt here itself is kind of, you know, shaky. If you turn it in too much, you can kind of go inside of the top cover. But overall, it does its job. It reveals the hop up that way you can easily adjust it. And the hop up, even though it is plastic, it ain't too bad. But I'm going to go ahead and replace it here with a CNC metal hop up here pretty soon, made by Matrix. Uh, not to skip the rear sight itself here, it is painted, which is nice to see. I know a couple of guns don't come with it painted. I like to fill it in if it's not. So that's nice to see that it comes with that painted in as normal. You can adjust it. I just like to keep it on that ridge where it sits in at, not all the way to the back. Um, because you know, honestly, I really never use the sights. I just see where the BB goes and adjust my aim from there. Uh, moving on to the metal body itself, as I said, has a really nice texture to it. Um, it's different from the original gun, but as you see, the fire selector still kind of digs into the body. So you know, it's kind of weird, but it does have the uh, the Russian markings for semi-auto and fully auto, which is really nice to see. the uh, The fire selector itself doesn't make a click, but you know it's in place. You know, fully auto, and then you got semi-auto, which really isn't semi-auto. It still goes on full auto. i got to put it one more click down, even off the selector. I don't know if that's just a loose selector plate problem, or if that's how all the D-Boys come. But it really ain't, you know, too bad, because I'm always using this gun on semi-auto for it being right at about 390 FPS, depending on which BB you use. So, you know, I just keep it all the way down all the time when I'm shooting. Uh, moving on to the mag itself, it came with a Bakelite mag. I like to use that on a different AK I got there, just a little Double Eagle AK. I like the standard look of these mags, and I really don't like using these or any other high caps in general because I am going to be getting some Bakelite mid caps, which is kind of contradictory because I didn't like the high cap because of the wobble it had. 
but uh, it did feed really well. I just did, I just don't like high caps in general when I'm using a full size, you know, AK model like this. Moving on to the uh, the mag release, just like any other AK, it's slightly bigger than others, so you just got to be careful on which mags. Uh, SEMA mags and D boys fit in just fine, and you know that's you know 80% of the mags on the market that are going to be in the price range. Also, the mag mid caps do work. I haven't had a chance to use them yet, but many people tell me they do work. Moving on to the uh, the trigger guard itself, you know, just pretty much standard. It's metal. Same thing with the trigger, metal. Going to the pistol grip, just like my old D boys, it has that texture. It's not smooth on the outside, and it has a textured piece on the inside. It has that really gritty feel to it, you know, that really durable feel. So that's really nice to see. Going to the stock, same wood as the front. I like the design. I really like the look of the stock compared to other AK wood stocks I've seen. The the normal, the standard AK stocks look pretty fine. But I like this look to it. I don't know what it is. I just like the shape. Um, the only problem is though, I do have a little bit of stock wobbly. Even tightening that up all the way, I probably get like one to two millimeters of play going left and right. So it ain't that much, but it's it's enough to notice, but not so much to where it's on your shoulder and it's going to affect your fire at all. Going to the back here, you've got this little piece right here where you would stick your cleaning tools into the back of the gun. Not that you'd ever have to clean out an AK. <laughs> but this is where you do put the battery out. You got two uh, flathead screwdrivers. Or flathead screws you take those right out and um, well this is not where the battery goes my fault it goes under the top cover but you know if you had the gun wired to the back there is a lot of space back there to put a battery so that's really nice to see turning the gun around going to the stock pretty much the same you got the uh, the rail mount here which was kind of loose at first but you know just a little bit of tightening up did the trick or actually uh, Delta one did that for me before I bought it from him Going to the trades, this might be something I might do my Crayola trick in the future. Feeling in the trades, and since this is a metal body, it should wipe off just nice and easy. It says 1121 right there. And then it says, I'm pretty sure that's a patent number. It says 91051121. Not too sure, but it's really nice. Overall, though, externals of this gun are really nice. Um, internals, pretty much your standard D-Boys from when I had my other D-Boys two years ago. When I shoot the gun, it sounds the same, the standard ROF sounds the same, and the ROF is pretty much the same. But I'm going to go ahead and stop the video here, and I'm going to do a semi-auto and a fully auto test. Okay, here we go. Now we're going to do a chrono with the X-Cortec, resetting it here. Keep in mind, this is .25s and the hop-up is adjusted. 401. 360. I'm pretty sure that's just the gun hopping all the way around. I don't know why it really does that. 358.7. But I'm usually getting it around either 360 or 400, which is kind of weird. 351, 365. So pretty much 350 to about the 365 range is what you're going to get with, you know, what I use when in the gun, which is .25s and the hop-up adjusted. Okay, here we go. First distance, as always. is 75 feet. First shot might be sighting in just to make sure I know what I'm hitting. As okay, so here we go. Now we're shooting 100 feet just to prove it because I did keep the zoom in there. So there we go. Okay, so there you go. Okay, now 125 feet. Let me wind up the mag a little bit. Okay, here we go. There you go. As you see, um, I get about five shots to hit right off the back, and then I get like two or three that go to the right. Okay, now my conclusion for this gun. Overall, externals are great. Um, the only thing really bad is that small bit of wobble on the stock. It really doesn't bother me, but you know, you see it, so you got to say something. Um, internals, the D-Boy standard internals, I'm pretty sure they'll stick up. And eventually, I might even downgrade the spring just a little bit to get a better rate of fire. Who knows, I just might throw a GMP motor in here. 
but uh, overall the gun's great. The accuracy, you know, could be better. But overall though, this is one of the better AK clones out there. Really nice. Um, it really does justice to you know what a VFC would be. I absolutely love the quality. And just a little rate of fire example here. Keep in mind this is with the 8.4 that did not come with the gun. Usually comes with the 9.6 but don't have the 9.6 wired the Deans yet and that's what I have this gun wired to. So yeah that was at 125 feet if you heard the, uh, <laughs> the chair there. But overall though really nice. The uh, ROF is average as of now. I'm looking to get that up there a little bit as since I like to do you know semi-auto and three round burst. Overall though I'm gonna give the gun eight eight and a half out of ten. Um, that mostly the one and a half points it lost is you know from the, the little detriment and accuracy there. I like to get a gun that you know the second I get it it's really accurate but overall though when I did took it to the skirmish you know me doing semi-auto I like to you know when I'm shooting on one target, five shots, that's what I usually do. You know, five to six shots in semi-auto. And um, overall, the gun was doing really good. For the two games, I did use it with .25s. Uh, my average distance of hitting someone is probably about 130 to 160 feet. So overall, really great gun. I'm glad I got it. Got it for a great price. So overall, um, I'm really going to recommend this gun. You know, there is the little things you have to do to make it a great gun. But just buying it the way it is, it's a really good gun. Okay, this has been What You're Looking At. Hope you enjoyed the video. I'm out.